but what I thought was going to kill me, the betrayal that I thought was literally going to take my life, ended up being one of the biggest blessings that I could have ever asked for. If I'm 100% honest, mm -hmm. I don't know if we can be this real. Yeah, okay. go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm 100% honest, that situation with her hurt me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a couple of other situations after that to hurt me as well. But I think the thing that has hurt me the most have been the inability to function in friendships inside a church. Mm. Jamie J. Hey girl. I'm so <laughs> excited to have you on today. I am excited to be here. Yeah. Finally got it got it all worked out. Finally got it together. Yeah. So <laughs> we have been friends now for Carried one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A long time. A long time. A yeah. long time. Chris and I have been married for 11 years. We started coming to the church a little bit before then. Mm -hmm. Our friendship didn't start like right, right away. So I would say around the time Chris and I got married though. Yeah. 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 So you got a lot of testimonies. Yeah. 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 And, and, and let's just cover your, your rap sheet. Okay. Mm -hmm. You are a licensed counselor. Yes, a uh, social worker. Yeah. Social worker. And I function as a counselor. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She a good therapist. <laughs> uh, you have five boys. Five, yes. You are a mom. You are a realtor. Yes. You are a praise team leader. Yes. You write plays and do productions. Yeah, I have done that. <laughs> You're dabbling in the culinary world. Yes. With these amazing lemonades. Yes. Uh huh. And gummy bears. And gummy bears. And there's more to come. And more, more to, to come. come. <laughs> and you do um, building our building, building young, young entrepreneurs. entrepreneurs. Yes. Bye. Yes. Um, which was phenomenal. You can look it up anywhere. Yes. And then you do your prayer pusher. That's a ministry business yeah. with your planners yeah. and everything else. Yeah. So you got a lot going on. A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot, <laughs> lot going on. <laughs> I was praying about that this morning. Like, Lord, which, what do you want me to do right now? We What's take most off. important right now? Right now. And I just started partnering with Brittany Farrelly um, with her Saving Our Daughters program. and Which I love. I think right now that's like. Man, it was something, a ministry that I didn't even know I needed, that I'm just grateful that she even thought about me to be a part of this because it has been so eye-opening. So eye and I love that for you mm -hmm. because I have seen, and in our 11-ish <laughs> years <laughs> in friendship, I've seen you go through the different stages yeah. of friendship, having a lot of friends, yeah. and then not having friends. <laughs> And then being a little iffy with friends mm -hmm. and and then mm -hmm. figuring it out. Okay. Yeah. And still figuring it out. Yeah, still figuring it out for sure. So I want to go back to just the, the beginning, beginning yeah. part of this process, yeah. which started with your first marriage. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. How a betrayal yeah. ended up turning into one of my biggest blessings. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The first marriage. That might be the title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. tell the people of God uh, okay. about about what happened. So um, my oldest son's father, Caden, him and I met in high school. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really kind of crazy because this is the part of the testimony that you don't always share. But, yeah. So a lot of times when we find ourselves in certain situations, we don't always realize that it be us reaping the seed that we sowed. Mm. Okay. So when I met um, Caden's dad, he wasn't dating a friend of mine, but he was heavily talking to a friend of mine. Mm. Yeah. To my knowledge, they wasn't like, you know, being physical with one another, but they were talking to each other. I won't give that whole testimony because, yeah, they're still, even though her and I aren't as close anymore, I still want to, yeah, protect 
her confidentiality. But um, the two of them were kind of talking. You know, he was talking to several other people. She had other friends as well. Nothing that I thought she was too, too serious about, you yeah. know. Um, and so him and I started out as friends. Like we, like genuine, uh, genuine, <laughs> genuine platonic friends. There was nothing romantic. I didn't find him attractive that way. I mean, he was a handsome guy, but he just wasn't the type of guy that I would like to talk to. Right. I guess I had a type. I didn't know, but I guess I had a type. And although he was attractive, like it's physically was attractive, personality wise, him and I were a little bit different. So mm -hmm. I wasn't attracted to him that way. So I started getting to know him, and I'm like, this dude is hilarious. He is funny. And then over the several months, um, we became good friends. And I don't remember what happened. I think I went through something that was really, really hard, and he kind of sort of caught me, like, in that vulnerable moment. And he was there for me. And then before I knew it, I was like, I think I like him. I'm like, all right, what, what is this? And so um, I went to the friend, and I said, hey, you know, me and Jeremy, we've been real cool or whatnot, and which you have known about, but I think I'm starting to like him. Is it okay that I talk to him that way? And initially she was like, girl, yes, I'm not studying him like that. Talk to him if you like him. So six months have passed. Okay. Okay. She comes back and she's like, you know what? I don't, I, I don't think I like the idea of y'all being together. And so, yeah, I'm not comfortable with it. But, but I'm like, baby, girl, too deep. Yeah. we in love. I'm planning our marriage. What you mean? I gave you this opportunity way back then. And I was, I hate to say dismissive, but I, I did. I told her right then on the phone. I'm like, girl, I called you six months ago. I'm in love with this dude now. Like, I'm legit planning our wedding 10th grade. <laughs> Not in 10th grade. 10th grade, 11th grade, maybe. 10th okay. grade. I'm planning on winning. I'm like, babe, it's too late. You know, I like him now. So you kind of going to have to get over it. Get over it and deal with those feelings and emotions. Mm. You know, it was tough. It was hard. But fast forward, him and I are together. It's We're teenagers. There's a lot of back and forth we go together and she go with him too and she go with him too it was a lot of that go again we're kids back then I thought it was the end of the world but now like he was a kid so um fast forward him and I I found myself pregnant I was 17 years old when I found out I was pregnant um and I'm graduating high school it was my senior year um him and I my oldest son has a heart condition called transposition of the great vessels. It's a very rare heart condition. A lot of people, unfortunately, don't make it. And those who do have to go through a lot of different things. And my son has had to go through a lot of those things. Um, he just, last year, about a year and a half ago, just had another triple bypass, second triple bypass open heart surgery, which is not a small thing at all. It's a mm -hmm. huge, huge, huge thing. But anyway... So after I give birth to Caden, we find out when he was five days old that he had transposition of the great vessels. And it was the scariest few moments of my life. I didn't yeah. know what was going on. He was turning blue and he's crying and I'm not understanding why he's crying. I take him to the pediatrician. Um, big shout out to Dr. Bruni. And he immediately, I actually was taking him to be circumcised and they told us that you had to wait at that time 10 to 14 days. You couldn't go that young. But by the grace of God, she called me and she was like, I know he's five days old. There's nobody on the schedule. We're going to be booked for the next several, however long. Just go ahead and bring him in. So that morning, I almost did not bring him. The enemy, now I know, I didn't know this at the time, but the enemy sent me a tormenting dream that they was going to cut my baby stuff off. <laughs> Help, Jesus. I did. I wish you could understand <laughs> how serious I was traumatized. I woke up like, I'm not taking him. He's too young. He's too little. What if they get cut it? it off. They go cut it off. And now Kaden go have to be Kadenia. <laughs> <laughs> I had just watched an episode of SUV. Uh, Law and Order. <laughs> when yeah, they did Jesus. that in real life. But anyway, 
So I thought they was gonna. I, I mean, it felt so real. I could smell what the building smelled like in the dream. Mm-hmm. It felt so real. And the lady had to come around the corner to tell me, I am so sorry. Dr. Burley needs to see you now. That was a dream. Mm-hmm. So I get up. He's so fussy. And this is my first baby again. By this time, I'm 18. I just turned 18. I don't know. I've never even been around a small baby like this before. So I'm not really knowing. Go in there. Smell. When I walk into the in the room, I smell the same smell. From the drink. The lady had the same uniform on. Mm. I'm about to run out of there. Mm -hmm. You hear me? And so she takes him. um, She takes him to the back. I'm like listening. I'm like trying to put my ear on the door to see if my baby back there crying or what. She walks around the corner with my baby the same way. But, and she did tell me that Dr. Bruni had some news for me. I am sweating. Okay. I'm nervous. Yeah. Go in the room. Dr. Bruni is like, we discovered that um, he used some term, but basically all of the points of his fingers, toes, even the point of his stuff was blue, meaning that he was lo- uh, leaving, uh, losing blood circulation in all of those areas. And so he started explaining it to me and what was going on. But again, my little 18 year old mind is going full over my head like, oh, OK, so I'll just make him a doctor's appointment and we'll go and we'll find out what happened. So. Fast forward, he's like, no, you need to go now. Take him over to Slidell. There's this doctor who is supposed to be going to Hawaii with his wife. It's there some bunch of year anniversary. He stays behind, sees my baby. He's still trying to tell me what's going on. It's still not registering how serious it is. It don't get real until he says, there's going to be somebody waiting for you at Slidell Memorial. And da, 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 da. So get to Slidell Memorial. It's a lady standing outside in the parking lot. Is this Caden Anders? Yes, Mm -hmm. looking for the baby. And I'm like, yes, this is Caden. She snatches him out of my arms. Like, I still, like, my insides do something. Snatches him out of my arms, runs to this back room. It looked like something on the movie. People sitting all on the floors, bandages on their heads. I've never seen a hospital like that before. And they get to the back. I'm walking as fast as I can. And I hear her say, oh, no, he's not breathing. Who not breathing? What are you even saying to me? What are you talking about yeah. right now? I'm trying to go in the room with them. It's literally like a movie. They're pushing me out, telling me, no, I can't go in there. It's like seven people in this room standing over my little bitty baby. I'm like, what is happening? Yeah. I go in the bathroom. I just start screaming. I didn't know what was going on anyway. So fast forward, we find out about Caden's heart surgery. They were trying to wait until he was like two or three year, uh, two or three months old. But at two weeks old, he started having complications. And they're like, we're not going to be able to wait that long. We actually need to operate. It was Wednesday. We actually need to operate Friday. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. He wasn't on any insurance. There was somebody that came to us and was like, he was on Medicaid. They mm-hmm. were like, hey, if you want your baby to get the best treatment, I know his dad is military. This stranger, now I know that was a worker of the enemy. Mm. comes and says, you, if you go and get married, the two of you um, can be added to his insurance that same day. So we go. That's his kid. He could be on the insurance regardless. Well, we had to have a lengthy process, though. Like, you okay. had to have the birth certificate. He was only five days old. I didn't know it wasn't making – like, all I knew was that there was pressure, mm-hmm. and we were trying to find the fastest way for him to get um, on his insurance. Oh, we would have had to prove paternity. And so they were like, hey, just do this, and you can be on the insurance the same day. So we went to Mobile. Mobile Mobile marries at 18. You don't have to have any, you know, well, I'm pretty sure anybody does marry at 18. So we went. We had some witnesses. We got married. Um, We left Mobile. We went to, mind you, Cajun is in New Orleans. So we left New Orleans, went to Mobile, got married, came to Biloxi, turned in the marriage certificate, at the Deers Center, they gave him all of the information back. We took it to the hospital. He was on his insurance. They back paid uh, all the way from the day he was born. So move past that, him and I, we're married now. And mind you, I just told you about the situation with my friend. Uh-huh. So I had this young lady that I was really good friends with. She was really there for me. She was actually there with me when I found out I was pregnant with Kaden. Um, 
her and I were really close. I didn't think that there was any nothing, no animosity, no anything. It was kind of weird that right after high school, I didn't hear from her for a long time. Like her and I were like super inseparable. And then I didn't hear from her for a long time, but then she kind of resurfaced. But by this time she was in the military, also in the Air Force. She had ended up getting stationed right back in Biloxi. And so, well, not stationed. I think that was where her tech school was. So I get started getting back in contact with her, and she started, like, telling me little things that she had met this guy, and she was thinking that she was falling in love with him, and um, she used this little code name that it was just strange because I, I'd never put the two together because this is my friend, and although my ex used to, you know, do his little thing, I just didn't think, you know, so she started giving me little hints like, oh, I'm in love with this guy. She made up this name, and mm -hmm. it just so happened that the name that she made up was a alter ego type name okay. of my ex. But I never put the two together. I'm thinking right. this is a real person. Super duper fast forward. I'm leaving the basketball game one day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I leave this, so super duper fast forward, I um, go to this basketball game, him and I kind of like arguing, but you know, mm -hmm. like the baby is finally home, Caden is finally home, this is like one of my first outings, because he spent five months in the hospital, and so um, this is one of my first outings since I've been back, since I've had him, go to this basketball game. He leaves. Uh, I call my friend. I'm like, hey, you just graduated tech school. Let's hang out. Let me treat you to some dinner or something like that. She's like, oh, I'm doing some stuff with some family. And uh, I leave. I just have this feeling in my, in my gut. And I'm like, you know, we've been kind of arguing. Let me just go check on them and just let them know that I'm still in this. You know, I know that things have been really stressful, but I'm still in this. I'm still willing to try if he is. Right. So I go to the place that he was at at the time. He was house sitting for a family member. And uh, when I pull up, I have a friend of mine with me. When I pull up, I see uh, this young African-American young lady coming out of this apartment complex. Because, again, he was house sitting. And I wouldn't normally be shocked or surprised, but the neighbors across the street was older Caucasian people. Yeah. And the people, I mean, not across the street, across the hall was older Caucasian people. And the only other person that lived up there was his family member. So, and he got to town. So, why is this young, African, beautiful African-American lady coming down the stairs when ain't thought nobody's supposed to be up there but him and this older Caucasian couple? Right. So, I'm like, oh, okay. But I'm parked way away. Right. So, I'm walking and I'm realizing, wait, that's his that's his car and why that young lady look like she walking to his car mm. so now i'm walking faster she opened up the door why is she opening up the door to his car I'm not, Yo, it's not car. my husband's car it's not because we're not boyfriend and girlfriend we're married and so it's not registering to me it's i'm like i'm knowing there's an urgency in my body but still i'm having a hard time computing because there's no way possible that like we was we was not seeing out of eye, but we wasn't doing that bad, I ain't think. And so I finally catch up. I'm talking about I think I turned on supersonic uh flash speed. Yeah. And uh so I finally make it to the car, I open up the door and I say, Oh and I say her name, because I see at that point that it's her. And I'm like, Okay, who is her? My friend. Your best friend. My best friend at that time. Not the young lady that he was seeing in the past. Wholly, totally different. No. Yes, a whole new person. Years have gone by. Yes, this is the girl who is my best friend who I just called, and she said, no, I can't hang out tonight. Because I got family. Because my family is going to take me out to celebrate. And so I was like, wow. I don't even know what happened. I remember my neighbors, I tried to drive, but I was so hysterical, I couldn't, so I had to pull over and get out the car. I started walking the rest of the way, way to my mom's house, um, and I remember somewhere at the 
top of my mom's street, still kind of sort of on Dito Road. I'm screaming, girl. Like, I'm screaming. I can't even breathe. I'm screaming. I remember, like, collapsing. And the next thing I know, I'm on my mama bed. <laughs> and she's like, what's wrong with her? What's wrong? My neighbors had to come and get me off the, and take me into the house. It was, it was, I was probably a little dramatic. But at that time, I thought my life was ending. Yeah. You know, like. You got a baby? With a heart condition that I've been super stressed out about. I'm watching this dude's heart beat. Like, when you have that type of surgery, when you're a baby, they can't sew you right up. So his chest is open. I can literally see the insides of his body. Yeah. Okay. You got a husband. I have a husband. That is in infidelity. Yes, and deep in it. And a best friend. And a best friend. Sleeping with your husband. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. And them the three people you'd normally talk to. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody. No, I had nobody to talk to, nobody to talk to. I had friends at that time that were really hurt because we kind of, not in a friend group, but we kind of shared, you know, friends, of course. And so that was a really, 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 really tough time. I don't, sometimes I don't know how I made it out of that time, except by the grace of God. I know I was really, really young and I didn't, I knew God, but I wasn't like, like I didn't know know him. I was in the mm-hmm. beginning stages. It was around that time that I really was just learning to pray. The situation with Caden, like it was really teaching me like to pray, like to seek his face. I didn't know how to pray. I was talking to God like, "Hey, hey, Lord, you know, uh, <laughs> you know that baby laying up and like on that bed, <laughs> <laughs> like." Yeah, I didn't know, so Mm -hmm. I used the tool, but my heart was so pure, and I just wanted to end that pain so bad. And I'm like, God, they're saying you're the only one that could heal this. You're the only one that can satisfy this. And Mm -hmm. so can you do it, please? (laughs) Like, what you waiting on? Please hurry up and heal me. And he did eventually heal me. And I want to say this because although that was a super tough time, I do fully acknowledge that we were children. Mm-hmm. Like we were children, we're talking about teenagers, not adults. You know, she Still was like a ch- 18, 19. 18, 19 years old. Yeah. While it was a super messed up thing like she was still a kid you know what I'm saying Mm -hmm. he was still a kid he really did not know better so when God healed me one of the way he may have known I was like they may have known they may have known but what I mean is they may not I don't think that any of us at that time really understood the sanctity of marriage you know what I'm saying we never we never that was my first time ever like I never saw marriage like my mom wasn't married I didn't have married aunts and uncles that were around me all the time. You know, I didn't have many friends who had parents that were married. Mm -hmm. So, and the same was for him. So I'm not excusing any behavior, but one of the things that God allowed me to realize to help me in my healing was that they were, they were babies. They were it was just literal. Yeah. 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 They were literal babies. Um, If I see her today, it was a long time that I was like, <laughs> don't let me catch you in cup for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> please don't, please don't let me catch you in cup for it. And then I remember you being younger yeah. and you actually saw her one time. Yeah. Singing in church. I used to have a dream uh-huh. that I was going to be at the front of the church leading praise and worship. <laughs> hands lifted and then she was going to walk through the back of that room, that building, and I was going to throw that microphone at her. <laughs> I was talking about it was going to go through her head. You hear me? <laughs> <laughs> like a bullet. <laughs> but thank God, God for deliverance. Thank God for deliverance, okay? And I didn't know anything about prophecy back then. I didn't know. Yeah. And sure enough, I was in the front of that church singing praise and worship. Yeah. And she walked through the back of the church for a funeral. And... I went to pastor and I said, she's here. He like, okay, (laughs) who's here? I'm like, the girl. It's a lot of girls in there. Yeah. (laughs) And I explained to him the situation. He said, okay, now go greet her. Say hello. She's hurting. Minister to her. And I'm like, (gasps) you want me to do what? What? (laughs) You want to go minister? I was thinking about a different, a street ministry, and yeah. I ain't talking about the gospel, okay? 
<laughs> like, Lord, so, if you want to use somebody, use if me. you want to use somebody, but no. And then my baby saw her because um, Caden's father, which is now deceased, he's he's passed on. Um, they did uh, form a relationship, mm -hmm. and so my baby got a chance to be around her, and he loved her. So when I saw the excitement in his eyes, when he was like, "Mama, there goes Miss," and I'm like, hmm. "How in the world can I hate?" somebody like this that my baby loves but we had actually forgiven <laughs> forgiven each other i did some real low down stuff after, after that i okay. did i ain't gonna lie i did some real low down stuff and um stuff that could have landed me in jail should have landed me in jail but by mm -hmm. the grace of god but anyway um her and i made up after that we did we actually sat down came together like two grown women and i'm like listen you're gonna be in his dad's life and you're going to be in Caden's life. And so I love you. I, this is my words that I said to her mm -hmm. in my living room at my house. I said to her, I understand that y'all were children at the time, but what I thought was going to kill me, the betrayal that I thought was literally going to take my life, ended up being one of the biggest blessings that I could have ever asked for. Yeah. Because had y'all not done what y'all did, I wouldn't know. Mr. Christopher Demetrius Norwood, do you hear me? Correct. I ain't going to say I wouldn't know him, but I wouldn't be with him for sure because I would still be chasing him. Mm -hmm. I needed that. Like, God never told him and I to be married. Mm -mm. You know, like, people can say what they want to say about divorce, and I do agree that people should not divorce. You should try every measure to not divorce. Mm -hmm. But when there's infidelity in place, when there is abuse in place, um, and then you have to be sure that God even told you to marry that person in the beginning. Right. God did not tell me to marry that man. I didn't want to shack up. And I was trying to go with the advice that the older people around me were saying at the time to get my baby on insurance the fastest. So God was not in it. I didn't ask God. I didn't do any of that. I was just trying to do what everybody else said that I should do at that time. We had this baby, so you got to get married now. And it was one day God told me, my word says what I put together. It, I, I, that was the first time that I ever heard him audibly before. And I was outside scared. I was taking out trash. It was drizzling. I felt the cheek, the little raindrop on my cheek. And I heard him so clearly over my, sh it felt like it was coming over this shoulder saying, my word says what I put together. Let no man put asunder. And I was like, and I knew what that meant. I instantly knew what that meant in that moment. So that good. I, this suffering, because we we was together, but we was miserable. He was depressed, I was depressed. He was mad, I was mad. We was broke, we had no money. He was hungry, I was hungry. Mm -hmm. You know, but we were trying to do, we were trying to model something that we didn't even have the tools to model. Right. You know, we just wanted to stay together for a Caden. And so... Once God delivered me from that and delivered him as well, mm -hmm. I couldn't be mad at him no more. God never told us to do that. I couldn't be mad at her no more because, like, if it wasn't not for you, I would not have walked in this blessing yeah. with my now husband. Now she did <laughs> try to play with me with him. But that's a whole nother subject for that's a whole a, nother day. That's a whole nother yeah, subject. a whole nother subject for a whole nother day. But even in that, I I just I let her go. She was, she was young. She yeah. was young. She was very young. He was young. I was young. I was not perfect. Yeah. I didn't know nothing about being no wife. I ain't know nothing about taking care of no home. Yeah. I didn't even know how to cook at that time, you know? So So you said your friend yeah. tried the, the man of God. Yeah, he did. He tried the man of God. But my husband, he was so sweet. He just was like, yeah, it's a no. It's, it's a, a hard no. It's a hard pass. <laughs> it's a, a hard, hard no. Yeah, my husband really, I mean, yes, God, absolutely, but <clears throat> my husband um, really kind of helped temper me a lot. Mm -hmm. Man, he, he really did, because uh, he, Do you he saved think, her. I was like, <laughs> he saved her, yeah. okay. Do you think going into the second marriage, first of all, were you ever scared to be married again because of that happened? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So how did you get past that enough to be married again I really just started trusting God like once I got out of that relationship I really did started like really 
like immersing myself in the word. Like I didn't just, I'm one of the people, and I'm not saying that I'm perfect by a long shot. I'm not saying that I do everything right, but I am one of those type of people that I'm going to give something a hundred percent or I'm probably not going to give you any percent, yeah. you know? And so when I decided I was going to get saved, I've seen Christianity done bad and I just didn't want to be one of those people that did Christianity bad. So, um, I really allowed God to heal me for real. Yeah. And then God gave me, eventually he gave me a piece that it is a part of my call to be a wife. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to wait until he sent the person. When I was married, though, it's crazy. When I was married in my first marriage, I had a dream. I had a dream of this man. And I fell in love with that man in my dream. I'm like, I couldn't wait to go to sleep. And there was several <laughs> times where not I went, your husband. Not, right, <laughs> not the man. But I was in my mind, I was like, maybe this is where me and my ex husband are gonna grow to. Like, mm -hmm. hey, you know, maybe God is trying to show me that things are gonna get better. You know, if I just keep going forward, things are gonna get better. And so I fell in love with the idea. So I started being trying to be better at home. I started, you know, trying to be tidier, trying to learn some recipes because if me getting better is going to produce this type of result in my then husband, mm -hmm. then let me do everything that I can do because this man, I love this man. And there was a certain situation that was going on in that um, marriage in my dream. <laughs> and when my first marriage fell apart, I'm like, well, there's no way you're going to allow me to see this uh, beauty. M me and this man were both saved. We were both going to church. We had a large family. We had, um, in the dream, we had two black SUVs. And I, I would imagine, I always say that they were Suburbans. And I was like, and I remember one day he was, he had this certain thing that was going on. And I'll, I'll save that part. But there was this particular thing going on. And he turned to me in the dream. And he was like, man, I really think X, Y, Z. And I turned to him. And I was like, no. Like, this, that, it's just not, that's not what it is. God has done this, this, and this. So you don't have to think about that no more. Look at me. Look at these children. Look at everything. And everything is okay. And so... When the first time I met, not maybe not the first time, but the first time we had a real deep, serious conversation, I'm on the phone with Chris. I'm divorced at this time. Well, no, we're separated at this time. And I'm talking about separated, separated. Like he like didn't, took a job overseas at this point. Okay. So we separated, separated. And he's uh, living with um, the young lady. And so he took a contracting job overseas. He was, he was no longer in the military. I don't even think I ever said that he was in the military, but yes, he was in the military. Anyway. So the first time my husband and I, my now husband and I were on the phone having a pretty serious conversation. We've been friends for a long time. So catching up and all of that, um, he said, he said the, the thing that the man in my dreams was that he was kind of sort of dealing with at the time. And I'm like, Hmm, what'd you just say to me? Can you repeat what you just said? He has no clue. So he just goes on telling me his story. And in that moment, I had this really peaceful feeling like that's the man in your dreams. And I'm like, Chris Norwood. The that Chris was Norwood? The, that's the guy? Yeah. Are you telling me that the guy that I had been dreaming about all of those years ago. That I was so in love with. That I was so in love with. That I was really thinking that this is where me and my ex were going to grow to. That this is that guy? Right. And so me and Chris wasn't great at first, but I, in the back of my heart and my mind, it was like, this is the person you need to be patient. Cause it was a lot of times Chris was about to get karate chopped in the throat. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was going to get old Jamie. So yeah, it was a bunch of times The the man that y'all see now, he was not that Chris used to be mean he used to be rude, super sarcastic. You mm. hear me? Yeah. Super duper sarcastic. And yeah, he is just not that no more. I was talking to Carson the other day and I was like, you really do got a really good daddy. Yeah. And he was like, I know, mama. I was just telling God that too. I was like, really? Oh. He was like, I was telling God, thank you for my good daddy. Because I know a lot of people don't have good daddies. And I'm like, that's true. At least you know. Yeah. At so, least you know. Had that situation not happened with my friend, I would have never 
you know. So it was hard for you to trust. You allow God to, to truly heal you, which yeah, is key. Truly. But as you continued on, separate from this friend, because obviously she has proved that she was not a friend. Yeah. Okay. With other friends, was it hard for you to trust them because of what happened? So not in the ways that you would think. Like I didn't have a hard time trusting friends when it came to my relationship with Mm -hmm. Chris. Like you would think that after going through all of that, that I would be like, or anybody would be like, oh, no, I don't want my, my friends around my own men. Amen. But Chris gave me such a me. confidence. Like, he gave me such a confidence yeah. in him. Mm-hmm. Like, he was saved. He was saved for real. He really loved God for real. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing that, like, he was, let me tell you how saved the man of God was. Okay. okay. There came a point in our relationship where we decided to be completely no physical anything no hugging no kissing no holding hands no anything prior to marriage marriage. and because he wanted to please God and even that way Mm -hmm. so my husband and I were abstinent for 14 months okay after having had been married Mm -hmm. after him and his whatever experiences he's had okay Mm -hmm. drive still driving okay decided that we were going to be abstinent for 14 months. We didn't say that it was going to be 14 months. I think the man of God, after a while, he was like, enough is enough. Will you marry me? And can we get married tomorrow? Yeah. Because <laughs> after he proposed, we was only engaged for like five weeks. Yeah. <laughs> the He's man like, of God right said, now. all right, Lord. <laughs> all right, now. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Oh. Here I am to say that you're my God. See where yeah. your mind went. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he gave himself to worship all of that time. Okay. And then he decided it was time. Yeah, um, but you were singing the song. I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a song on my heart to this yeah. day. Yeah. Anyway. And the, okay. So, yes. He, I trusted him. Yeah. If you were however active he was in the past mm-hmm. and has decided that I want to do this the right way. Mm-hmm. I'm, I was married, so you know you can imagine how, yeah. And I'm, I'm like, I'm with that. That's what I want. It was actually an idea that I had initially, and he was like, "Let's do it. I want to please God even in this." Mm-hmm. And so I didn't have any question about his ability to keep himself um, when it was from temptation. From temptation, because here we are every day around each other and he was able to keep himself that way with me so my the issues that I had in friendship didn't come from that angle because I had full confidence in my husband the issues were just like how do I know that you even really love me I didn't think uh I never looked at people like, oh, you're jealous of me. Like, even all of that, the, the, all of that that went down with her and I, uh, my ex-friend, I didn't think, oh, she did those things because she was jealous. I would hear people throwing those words around, but I never, I'm like, I'm not a jealous person. So I just can't imagine someone being so jealous or so whatever with me that you would intentionally try to harm me. You know, like she did and, and she tried a second time, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so it wasn't until that point that I'm like, dang, somebody can really allow jealousy to get in their heart with somebody that they say that they love to the point to where it can cause them to start doing some real underhanded stuff. So the issues that I started having in friendships were just like, can I trust you with me? Can I share this? intimate part can I share my secrets with you for real can I share my heart's desires and things like that with you for real because I'm a type of person that when you come into my life and you're a friend for real I really I'm I'm gonna try my best to be a good friend to you you know like I don't know how to explain it without it sounding all crazy and weird but like it makes sense because it wasn't that that your friend just betrayed you Mm -hmm. with your Mm ex-husband you trusted her with your heart yeah and so she betrayed yes 
your heart. Yes. Like it, it was actually a betrayal of you yes. and not with him. Yes. Yeah. Because it was geared towards you. Yeah. If it was just with him, then she would never have tried yeah. your now husband. Mm-hmm. But it was you. Like, dang, you really have a disdain and a hatred in your heart to me and where did this even come from yeah like so but it makes sense why you say that you would you struggled or do you still struggle so I went through a phase where like it's crazy because I I didn't grow up with a lot of sisters or anything like that I grew up around mostly my brother and his friends Um, I did have a god sister that I was very 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 close to two of them that I was very very close to growing up but I always had this longing for sisterhood. Mm-hmm. And without even knowing, I would, like, if you and I are friends, I'm going to introduce you to all of my friends. And maybe we can just be this great big friend group. And we're going to love each other. And we're going to travel the world with our husbands. And our children are going to be raised together. And just kind of this somewhat fairy tale of a. Um, you know what it is? What's that? That movie. Sisterhood in a Traveling Pants. <laughs> what movie? Is You've that? never seen that movie. I've never seen that. It, <laughs> it was I'm these magic pants right. that fit everybody, no matter what size they were, and they had a sisterhood. It was like a this friendship group. Anyway, I that was my movie. That, that was my movie, and that was that was you know one of my ideals when it came to like sisterhood yeah. friendship. But I think it's just something that we always saw growing up. Yeah, and we do have this. I don't want to call it a fairy tale, but it is a fairy tale yeah. that everybody is going to get along and yeah. everybody's going to be besties. And yeah. But I think even like biblically, Jesus showed us, right? He had the multitude. Yeah. He had regular disciples. Mm-hmm. Then he had the 12 disciples. Mm-hmm. But within them, he had the, the three. three. Yeah. And so... Although it's good in theory, yeah. it's like some people just will be closer to you than yeah. others. Like some people will have more of your heart than yeah. other people will. Yeah. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. But on the outside looking in, I think a lot of people have issues with that because they're like, why Absolutely. am I not in in the inner circle? Yeah. It reminds me of, I think that was somebody, mama. <laughs> In scripture, where she was like, can my son sit at your, your left and your right hand when you get to heaven? You don't remember her asking that? It was, two of his, it was two of his disciples. And she was like, can you sit my, my two sons at the left and the right hand of the father? But it's that idea that, that everybody wants to be like in that inner, inner, inner space. Yeah. And, and, and you know what? Like, if I'm 100% honest, mm-hmm. I don't know if we can be this real. Yeah, go okay. ahead. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm 100% honest, that situation with her hurt me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had a couple of other situations after that to hurt me as well. But I think the thing that has hurt me the most have been the inability to function in friendships inside a church. mm like it is something about having friends in church to get other church people upset. It is. It is something because about they feel it. like, like everybody. It should be one big kumbaya circle. And although we coexist peacefully, yeah. it doesn't mean that we all have to be super close. Yeah. I don't have the capacity to invite everybody to my house. Nah. <laughs> I don't have that. My house is not that big. Me you nor know? yeah. You know, and I don't have the desire or want to share with my most inner thoughts and deepest whatever with 200 women at all <laughs> unless the lord specifically leads me to while yeah. i'm in the middle of of giving an exhortation yeah <laughs> it's just it's that has made me the most uncomfortable in friendship is trying to figure out how do i develop a relationship with Aisha and really love on Aisha and steward Aisha well in friendship without causing sister such and such to envy, to become jealous, to hate what we are building. And so much so that they would maybe start saying other things to other people. Mm -hmm. And now you're saying more things to other people. And now before you know it, there's all of the whispers 
and the Snickers and all of that. And the click. And the and now we're clicks. Um, I really love what Pastor said about clicks back in the day. Like I, I, that yeah, is I a message that, that I really wish that he would bring History that about. Play. Pastor McGee, please bring that word back around. It is my request that you please bring it back around because like people just don't understand sometimes. Like I've been in this ministry for a very long time. Mm -hmm. There's people that have been in this ministry and have, we have co-labored with each other mm -hmm. for a very long time as well. So of course you and I might have something that's a little bit more deeper than somebody who just came yeah. because we've been laboring with each other for years. And then I think too, you, because we can get into it, okay? <laughs> but so we're saying 11 years. Mm -hmm. Well, somebody that came five years ago may feel like they've been there forever, but they mm -hmm. still don't have as much history yeah. as other people might have yeah. together. And so they still potentially can get offended yeah. and say like, well, I've been here forever. And yeah. like, I'm, st I still feel excluded. I still feel outside of the circle, but I think it's because people idolize certain people. Yeah. And that's the part. And, and the reality, it, they don't just idolize friendship. They idolize people yeah. and positions in the church. And they covet the type of friendship that they assume that you have, yes. not knowing the intricacies the, girl, of the actual friendship. Say that part one more time. They covet what they think. think. Yeah. Okay. Not knowing the intricacies. They like, oh, they, they are kumbaya. Man. Baby, they Ooh. ain't talked in three weeks. Come on, somebody. That is literal, actual, actual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is literal, actual, a fact, Jack. Like, I'm telling you, there has been so many times people have looked at different relationships and situations. And, I'm and just you like, always in the middle of it. Always. Like, literally always, and it has literally made me sometimes feel like maybe I'm just not destined to have this closeness because anytime I get closeness with somebody, somebody else is mad about it. But then God is like, no, girl, stop that. I got a Jonathan out there for you, David. I got mm, that for you. That's good. And it don't matter what people say. Like, every connection that I bring in your life, it's because I want it there. Mm -hmm. Of course, the enemy is going to try to disrupt, try to cause confusion, try to cause discord. You just push toward the mark. Can't nobody tell me about my relationship with you because when I was really trying to fight in prayer and learn just about intercession and trying to be one of the, uh, try to be the best woman that I knew how to be at that time, it was you that was coming to knock on my door at 430 in the morning to wait to make sure. I got up for prayer, like not call me actual drive your car into my driveway, undo your seatbelt, mm -hmm. open your door, walk to my door at 415 in the morning, 430 in the morning, knock like you're the police yeah, to make sure that I'm up, mm -hmm. knock hard again, just to say, well, I'm got crust in my eyes. You said you wanted to go to prayer. Yeah. Like holding me accountable yeah. because as a friend, you know, that's something that I really was passionate about. Mm -hmm. You knew that's something that I really wanted to develop in and you held me accountable. Mm -hmm. So you can't be upset with me, sister such and such that I'm super loyal or super committed to Aisha because when I was trying to grow in the area, this woman was here like a lifeline. There's been several situations that I've been like, Aisha, I don't, I don't know how I'm, I don't know what to do here. And yeah. you've been there for me. Do I want us to grow more in the future? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Because I told a young lady, um, actually a, a friend of mine, not too long ago, that I'm in a season in my life. And it's my, oh, I, I, I struggled to say it to her. I really did. But I'm in a season in my life where I don't know that I have the capacity to fully carry anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that I, I can do that right now. I have said that before. And I'm there right now. <laughs> I don't, and I really hope, like, that people ain't going to eat me alive for saying it, but I've carried people for a very long time without being carried when I'm going through some of the hardest things in my life mm -hmm. being dismissed 
or my pain is like, oh, you'll get over that. But yet and still, when your world is crumbling and falling to pieces, I'm showing up to your door. Where the people that's going to show up at my door? Correct. So for that reason, I don't have the capacity to carry anybody. But what I do have, I have the capacity to labor alongside. I want you to be fully in your purpose. Right. I'm going to be fully in mine. And we're going to sharpen each other. We're going to hold each other accountable. Like if I'm not going to say that. I'm going I'm to hold it. But yes, that's where I am right now. You said a whole mouthful yeah. about being the strong friend and carrying people. Yeah. Babe, I used yeah. to tell people, like, I don't have the energy to drag nobody. Yeah. Yeah. Not in this season. There was a season for it. But in this season, for me personally, I think it's so beautiful when you can see sisters really encouraging each other in the word Mm -hmm. there's not just like a always just like a I don't want to I hate to use the word negative but that's just what it is if every single time I talk to you on the phone it's another like catastrophic Mm -hmm. event that's going on another complaint another person did you wrong another person said like it at some point and this has been going on for years years at some point to get off that train yeah it's making me a little sick to my stomach <laughs> and I just don't have the capacity for that but I do have the capacity for you being a hundred percent at least actively working on getting better mm-hmm. you finding out what it is that God wants you to do right now because that changes mm-hmm. and you to be in that word and researching finding out how to become this woman that God wants you to be and if I'm on that like how can we sit up and gossip when we are fully in trying to figure out the next business venture for you slash ministry for you, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? How can we be, you know, in, in any of that when we are actively pursuing how to advance the kingdom of God? You know what it is for yeah. me? It is the idea that <laughs> I just don't have the capacity to tiptoe around people's triggers. Mm-hmm you say i just want to be in healthy you got to go back and say that part again you said you don't have the capacity to do what to tiptoe around people's triggers because if you're constantly triggered just by my presence by my typical conversation if this is just who i am then that's okay we just might not are supposed to be friends in this capacity because we have differing personality types. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think like the sisterhood thing is, is great in theory, yeah. but if it's the A, B, C and D personality yeah. and B and D clash, yeah. like A and B get along, yeah. B and C get along, yeah. C and D get along. But there's going to be some clash when there's so many different personality types. Yeah. And so if you don't, if you're not a person that's heavy on giving people grace mm. for just their everyday characteristics, mm. you probably not going to be a good person to be in a friend group. Mm. 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 If you're constantly critical, you constantly see people's flaws mm. and everything that's wrong with them, you're not ready to be in a friend group. My God. Just, just being honest. And that's me, okay? Because I have been critical. (laughs) And I had to realize, like, I'm good friends with this person. I'm good friends with that person. I'm good friends with that person. Me and this person, we're cordial, but I don't know if I can handle them in a full friendship capacity right now. And so if that's what being in a in a full friend group looks like, then that may not be the best thing for me. And there's nothing wrong with that because I can still love you and I can still pray for you and I can still speak life into you from a distance yeah we don't have to be kumbaya best friends forever singing off into the sunset yeah you said a mouthful I don't even know what else to say (laughs) maybe the tiptoeing around the triggers yeah that's that's have you had friends like that I have and I've probably been a friend like that before as yeah. well. But 
I have, I have. And it's one of the hardest things in the world when you have to separate. Mm-hmm. You got to go with God. Because you love them. You really do. There is a genuine love. There's a heartbreak there. I mean, you don't want to have to do it, but at some point you just got to realize that it's holding you in a place. Mm -hmm. Constantly going over these things over and over again with the individual and it sounds so bad because as a friend I'm supposed to journey with you mm-hmm. I'm supposed to go through these things with you mm-hmm. but there what is the point that you just have to say I cannot I cannot base my life around your triggers sis for me it's if I am scared to tell you my good news it oh makes me question if I want to be your friend Oh my gosh, <laughs> girl! Say that part again. Uh, that's just reality. Like, if I question whether or not I want to share good news with you because I'm afraid that you're gonna at, feel away at how it's gonna affect you, that I'm not sure that I have the capacity to be close to you in this season. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it I think is an open, honest conversation that we need to have. Yeah. And I think that ends up being the, the issue is we don't have a lot of open, honest conversations. I do. Or, <laughs> I was like, that or. Unfortunately, I'm trying to learn to be a little bit more tactful in my open, honest conversations. Yeah. God's been dealing with me with that. But, yeah. I feel you because I have been the friend that's either I'm completely passive and I just let you run all over me. But when I get aggressive, yeah, I'm going to tell you about yourself. Yeah. And everything that I've been holding back. And so now I'm trying to be more assertive. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I, you know, I wasn't really feeling this. But also a part of that is like, am I tripping? Am I being the sensitive one? You know, it it, is a lot of self-work. Yeah, it is hard. I have found myself being more sensitive in relationships than I've ever been before. Mm -hmm. And it's so new and so strange i heard sarah jakes there's a clip going um floating around with her she's talking to this guy the podcast i think it's the something about me like have dear future wife i think it's something like that well she's talking to him and she says something but whatever she said triggered like i was like she was talking about relationships and i was like this can be said even in friendships Mm -hmm. and i'm in a place where her conversation made me realize, and I don't know if she said this or if I went in one of my, like sometimes I hear something and I'll go off on go a tangent off on, in, yeah, in my own little mental tangent. And one of the things that I left um, from feeling in, I left feeling after hearing that was when she said, uh, no, the thoughts that I had was in this next season of friendship, I just really want to feel safe. Safe. I really want to see, feel cared for. And you know what? That's a that's a difficult place to be in because I remember reading a book, um, How to Find Safe People, mm. by the same man that wrote Boundaries, Dr. Henry mm. Cloud. And I was listening to that book on Audible, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm not a safe person. Mm. But that took a lot of like humility mm-hmm. and a lot of maturity to be like, okay, what can I fix? It's maturity. That's what key. can I change about myself? And it wasn't even for friendships. I was thinking that for my then boyfriend at the time. Like, I'm not yeah. a safe person even for him. Like, what is it in me that I can change in order to become more of a safe person? Mm-hmm. And I don't think a lot of people do a lot of Mm -hmm. self-reflection. And if they do, they end up going into pity parties and they want everybody to join them. Yeah. Yeah. I need that book. (laughs) I'm going to go and get that book today. I'm going to give you my Audible. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you the Audible. Slide my phone, please. Yeah. Yeah. But friendships are so hard. And I think it's because... We forget that soul ties aren't just for having sex. Yeah. And they're not just for, like, romantic relationships. Yeah. Like, 
David and Jonathan, yes. right? Their souls were knit together. They had yeah. a friendship yeah. soul tie yeah. that they formed through the covenant yeah. that they made. And, and when we don't fully understand covenants and we don't fully understand what we're getting ourselves into when we make these covenants, like we're going to be best friends forever, yeah. that's a covenant. <laughs> yeah. And when you make that covenant, the enemy is going to try. Yeah, He's going to try you on that. I've literally uh, kind of recently experienced that with a friend that I love. I feel like she's one of my closest friends in the world. And it's just we got into this point where we just could not seem to be getting it together. Mm -hmm. Like, but we made a covenant. Uh, and in that covenant, we said we was going to be there for each other. Mm -hmm. We're not going to drop each other. We're not going to leave each other, like, without explanation. We're going to do this in friendship. Until God says otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, and after that, I feel like all hell broke loose. Like, and it wasn't that her and I was like arguing or fussing. Mm -hmm. There was just an awkwardness that came about. Like, you know, and so her and I, I love the fact that she's an intercessor just like I am. I love the fact that she reads the word just like I do. So her and I are in God's face. And as we are both in God's face, he's mending that. You know, mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's rearranging and moving those things around and I'm, I'm, I'm God dope for that I love it I love mm -hmm. that for us <laughs> um but then there's been other times too where I've been in relationships also with individuals that I just I love and adore but we just cannot get on the, the on the same foot mm -hmm. and I don't know why but I feel like in that there's a maturity factor that we have to sit down and say I don't know how to friend well yeah so many times when you are the strong friend, there's nobody really there to correct you. Mm -hmm. Like when you're the one that's in the word, when you're the one that's whatever, there's nobody to say, hey, you know, you kind of, you kind of wrong mm -hmm. in that way of thinking or, you know, like, where did you get that idea from? And hey, that may have been really good for Aisha, mm -hmm. but that didn't, that don't really work for me. I don't care for that. And so I think it takes real love and real maturity to say, Instead of looking like, well, no, I, you're not going to change me. This is just who I am. You're going to accept me or you're not. I think it's real mature to say I love you enough to figure out how I can fix this. Because mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're telling me that this thing hurts you that I do, no, I, I understand that you're not trying to change me as a person because you love me as a person. Mm -hmm. But I might just really have to pay attention to how I talk to you. Yeah, I just might have to really pay attention to – Maybe not necessarily how I talk to you, but what are you going through? I'm trying to play a little bit right now, but you're going through something and you can't handle the play. Mm -hmm. So when you can't handle the play, how do I now approach you? Mm -hmm. How do I now come to you? How do I now, one of the things I need is care for you now. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to care for you. If I know you have something going on, I know how to turn it. But I also, I have that my history and my background in social work that has taught us a lot of that. I know everybody doesn't have that, so I do need to extend grace in my friendships. But at the same time, like, if I'm going through something, this I need to feel cared for, mm -hmm. not babied. And I'm not going to say I'm sensitive because I'm going through something mm -hmm. and I need you to show up for me a little bit differently. I just need you to have the maturity to say, all right, I love you enough to figure out how I can care for you. Love The five love languages. Yeah. That can be applicable in our relationships with our friends. Like, if I know that Aisha loves acts of service, then when I got some free time, I'm going to come over here and help you wash bottles. I'm going to come over here and help you get your baby closet the, or whatever you need. It's like it's a whole sink full right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do that because that's your love language. Yeah. If I know your love language is quality time, then I don't got nothing to do today. I can work from home today. Let me come sit on your couch and let's watch TV and order food together. If that's your love language, your love language, acts of service may not be my gifts may not be mine, but that might be yours. It is. So look for your birthday. I might not be the person that's going to pop up at your house with gifts all the time. Correct. But when those things that are happening, that's important in your life, I'm going to try to figure out how I can do that for you. So your birthday, mm -hmm. um, maybe it's some other big event. Maybe it's your five year, 10 year on your job. That's a big deal. That's a monumental time. So maybe I'll send you some flowers or send you something like that. I want to speak your love language. It's yeah. not that 
I should just expect you to only speak mine and me never been to figure out how to speak yours. Yeah. So the same thing, the same effort that we put into our romantic relationships, when we really are wanting our friendships to thrive, we really want that fairy tale, the, what was the secret life of pants? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Something just like that. Traveling pants. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If I really want that type of relationship, I got to learn how to love Aisha. Mm-hmm. I have to learn how to friend Aisha. Mm-hmm. My friendship with Aisha is going to be different from my friendship with Brittany or my friendship with Jessica or my friendship with Star or my friendship with Tay or whoever. I have to show up for Aisha. I can't just take this one hat and try to apply it to everybody and think that it's going to work. No. Same way with my children. My 17-year-old needs something totally different than my 2-year-old needs. Correct. I can't give him the same thing and it's not just because of the age my 17 year old and my eight year old they both need my attention my eight year old that baby is affectionate Mm -hmm. okay my 17 year old don't want you touching for real Mm -hmm. so me trying to hug and love on him all day it's not helping him that's not helping to boost him but just me and him spending time riding talking going to catch a movie or just chilling in the house like he loves What's that stuff called? Anime. Mm -hmm. Like, it was so exciting for him, for me and him to sit on the couch the other day and watch anime while we was making lemonade. So I guess we wasn't fully sitting on it. And he's telling me about it, and I'm engaged. That meant the world to him. My baby lit up for the rest of the day. My Carson, as long as he can put his head on my lap and I can play in his hair or something like that, he is so fulfilled. He don't care what we watching, what we eating, what we doing, as long as he's getting that quality time and that physical touch. Correct. Every so. time he see me, he walk up to me, he go, hey, TT, <laughs> and he lean and give me a hug. Yes, that's, he wants, that's how I, but if I'm trying to be harsh to him and I know that that's how he receives love, then I'm going to be like, no, don't touch me. Get away. I wouldn't dare do that to my baby. Mm-hmm. So as a friend, if I'm knowing that you need a thing from me and I'm saying, nah, that's not my personality. You trying to change me. You don't have the capacity for me, boo. Mm-mm. And I might not have the capacity for you because if you really love me, I'm not telling you to just do some stuff that's unethical or out of your scope of yeah. being. But when I'm saying something simple, like I'm going to express love to you the way that you need it. And I just ex- or expect that to be reciprocated. Agree. Does that does that sound okay? No, it's really it good. don't sound too deep and creepy. No, like. and I think I think on the <laughs> not on the flip side, but to to add to that, I think it's important that you allow your friends to tell you about yourself. Absolutely. Because if they are never able to do that and correct you, and then you're not a good friend. You're 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 incapable. You're incapable of being a good friend because you can't even receive that I'm telling you I don't like something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. All that was good because I was sure gonna ask you how do because that's huge for women. Everybody's mm-hmm. looking for friends. Yeah. So for the people that got out there, because you make friends easily. Do I keep them easy? <laughs> I realized at one point, though, recently, that I had made friendship an idol. Yeah. I think a lot of us make friendship an idol. And I had realized that I made the friendships friendships an idol, and so I did have to step back a little bit. And I try to communicate that to the people that are closest to me. Like, I'm not acting funny. I just got to get in God's face because I have placed you in a place that you're not supposed to be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to be careful because you'll start looking for things in friends that you should only be looking for in your spouse, that you should Mm. only be looking for in God, Mm -hmm. that you should only be looking for from your kids. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? From your parents. But I'm expecting my friends to show up sometime how my mama do. No, (laughs) that's not a thing. But not to say that I actually do that, but I'm saying you can see that happening a lot, especially when there's trauma there. Yeah. When there's trauma in the area of parenting, guess what? I'm going to expect my friends to show up like a parent. When there's trauma in the area of, I don't know, romantic whatever. There, I have been in situations with people where I had to literally be like, you know I'm not your old lady, right? Right. I'm not your, <laughs> I'm not your girlfriend. You know I'm not. We don't go together, friend. Yeah. Friend. We're we're friends. Yeah. We don't go together. You act like, like you want to kiss me right now. Right. 
And I know that that there's not that they weren't. The thing about it is they weren't seeking. They they didn't want me like that, but there was a trauma there, mm-hmm. and so they wanted me to fulfill something that only their future husband could fulfill, mm-hmm. or their husband could fulfill. And I'm like, baby, I can't show up for you that way. Yeah, we had to switch that a little bit. <laughs> but that is good. I'm yeah. gonna say this one thing, and then we're gonna yeah. close out because we are out of time. <laughs> oh no, we gotta come back and do this. We do. Um, I was just kind of in my thoughts the other day because I, I be in the mugs a yeah. lot <laughs> and um, as I was in my thoughts the thought just came up it was like Aisha a lot of people allow admiration to turn into attraction mm-hmm. and I'm gonna just leave that right there I'm, I'm gonna let y'all pick up what I'm putting down well so you might admire something about somebody and then you start feeling a little like, do I like them? Am I attracted to them? Like, no, I admire like with your first husband. I just admire that it's he's funny, funny and I want to be funny and I want to be jovial and I want to be happy and, you know, and feel those things. With my previous relationship, um, something that I admired about him was I felt like he heard the voice of God, of God more clearly than I did. Mm-hmm. But I allowed that to turn into an attraction because now I want you to be the voice of God for yeah. me. Because I don't want to pursue figuring out what that looks Man, like for me myself. Good. My God. Because we sometimes are lazy spiritually. Yeah. And very. You to it's hear. me. It's very lazy spiritually okay. a lot of times. I want you to hear from God for me. Yeah. I don't want to have to do the work myself. And, babe, I'm not going to do it for you, okay? Mm. Uh, I'll do it with you. I will partner with you in faith yeah. but I don't want to do it for you yeah, yeah. oh that's good oh All right. that's so good we gotta close <laughs> you sure <laughs> y'all gotta eat today y'all gotta go get your baby you know y'all got to do that I'm we just got <laughs> cause see you know I got five kids I'm having a great time yeah here. <laughs> <laughs> can I go with y'all yeah Where y'all going <laughs> the man of God got them children <laughs> He got them. He got the babies. He That's, did a good job with his babies. He got, he got the children. <laughs> so good that I can go get lunch with y'all when we leave. Yes. Let's, I'm let's just saying. I'm coming lunch. home, baby. Coming home. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah. But I do want to pray for the people who are struggling in friendships, yeah. who Absolutely. are struggling with that trauma, who may need yeah. to get some healing in that area so that yeah. they can develop better yeah. friendship so that they don't feel so lonely because I have been there and I know what that feels like mm-hmm. yeah yeah you read yeah <laughs> father I thank you so much for who you are I thank you for every person that is watching this video that struggles in their friendships yes. I pray that you'll begin to heal them mm-hmm. from the inside out so that they can authentically be who you created them to be not this persona that they have built not this facade that they are putting on but help them to truly and authentically be themselves so that they begin to attract the people that you have ordained for them to be in covenant with i pray that you would help us to to tear down the idols in our lives for certain people for certain friendships help us to truly walk in what you have called us to in this season and we just thank you for it now I pray blessings over Jamie, over all of her friendships. I pray that you would restore everything that has tried to be taken away from her, everything that she may have thought that she lost in this season. And I just thank you for it all now. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we do pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for having me, girl. Thank you for joining me. (laughs) Is that it? All right. I've been wanting to say we are church family. Right. (laughs) Thanks so much for joining us for this episode. You've heard from us. Now we want to hear from you. I do prayer videos every single day. Comment your name and what you want me to pray for below. And follow me on any social platform at I'm Aisha Danielle so that you'll be able to see when your prayer video gets posted. Until next time, see you later.